every TMJ patient is a cervical patient, but not every cervical patient is a TMJ patient. But unless you ask, you may not even know that you have a TMJ patient. Like a, a patient with headaches that you think is cervicogenic, there might be some kind of TMJ overlap. You know, if someone has neck pain, someone has back pain, um, especially like back pain and lower extremity stuff, you can kind of distance yourself from how that feels, right? But if it's like if your head hurts and speaking hurts and eating hurts and things that like social interaction and eating, which is such a pleasurable thing, and you do that with like friends and family and loved ones. If you can't do those things, and plus your head hurts, it's like you can't distance yourself. It's like you hurt. If you help a patient with back pain, they're gonna be grateful. If you help a patient with TMJ dysfunction, they're gonna leave you in their will. It's a really grateful population. The bottom of the skull is like a ball where it articulates and the top of the jaw is a ball. So I would say, is a ball on ball? Does that seem like a stable surface to you? No, right? So the disc is concave superiorly and concave inferiorly. And the way that works is that provides stability to both surfaces. So normally the disc travels along with the condyle when you first open, there's a rolling phase during about 40 to 50% of motion. And then the condyle glides anteriorly and the disc is supposed to be on top of the condyle. If the disc ends up subluxing enough, then it no longer has that biconcave superior and inferior shape, and it kind of becomes malformed, so it doesn't really fit anymore. But a lot of that clicking that you hear or feel with TMJ derangements is the disc ends up being anterior, and it's actually reducing and then subluxing again, and reducing and subluxing with every movement. Because of the nature of the TMJ, not too many people know the anatomy, and I think patients need to know why they might their posterior structures might be sensitized. It's one of the only ways times I go about posture mechanically, because pain science has taught us that posture is not related to pain, and that that's definitely true. But the thing with posture and TMJ is that the more forward head is, and forward head in and of itself is not a bad thing, until all of a sudden it becomes your trigger. But just due to lack of variability, because so many people are texting and driving and writing, I mean, unless you just are like painting ceilings for a living, most of the time you are unloaded. So if you're unloaded and your, your cervical spine is protracted, your mandible becomes retracted. And when the mandible becomes retracted, it's, it's almost like you are pulling your mouth open. But the typical presentation is usually unilateral. They may deviate, they may click or clunk, depending on whether it's intraarticular or extraarticular. You typically are gonna see the deviation to the side of tightness or pain, but oftentimes the side that's hypermobile often hurts. It's usually unilateral, but sometimes it's bilateral. They usually have difficulty eating, sometimes smiling, sometimes speaking, they can't open wide, and it's just kind of analogous to a low back pain patient or a neck patient who can't flex. Once the brain puts the, that area on lockdown, motion is limited. So, but it's not because it's bad for them, it's just because it triggers their complaints.